There are a lot of choices that need to be made when setting up a computer system and a network. In this video, we'll take a look at the different network types and options that are available. It's critical nowadays to have a strong, reliable network connection. There are a lot of different ways that you can set up a network and a lot of different types of networks that are available. We've already learned about a LAN or local area network. Devices in this type of network are in close range of each other and connected to the same router. A WAN, or Wide Area Network, is different in that it connects computers that are far away, usually connecting different LANs. This is a more difficult setup that will make use of several routers. The Internet is an example of a WAN. Two new networks that we'll take a look at expand on the LAN because we now know that we have a few options when setting up a network. A WLAN is a wireless LAN and uses radio frequency to send and receive data. A VLAN is a virtual LAN which can be wireless as well, but adds the ability to set up and organize separate networks. The two are similar, with one big difference. In a WLAN, anyone connected to the network uses the same network and the same settings. A VLAN allows for separate networks to be created. Each network can have different settings. You'll need a special router or a managed switch device for this to be possible. Many routers today come with this ability. If your Wi-Fi has a guest network, or if your school has a separate network for students and for teachers, then that means you're using a VLAN. There are protocols that are associated with wireless internet connections as well. Wireless networking includes a set of standards that specify how your Wi-Fi and data transmissions work. There are a few different standards in the 802.11 family that we'll take a closer look at. These standards were developed by the IEEE, which stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Each standard has a designated speed, frequency, and comes with different features. So let's take a look at these different standards. A standard is a formalized protocol that's accepted by most of the parties that use it. The original 802.11 standard was very slow, at only 1.2 megabytes per second. This first set of standards are far too slow for today's networking needs and are now no longer deployed. Devices using this haven't been made for over a decade and won't work with most of today's equipment. You can see that over time, the speeds have gotten much better, all the way up to 1300 megabytes per second. Keep in mind that the speeds listed here are theoretical, and the actual speed of your connection is usually much lower and can depend on factors like interference and your distance from the signal. Did you notice the two different frequency bands here? In short, the higher the frequency, the faster the speed, but the shorter the signal range. So if you're very close to the signal, the higher frequency band of 5.0 GHz would provide better speeds. But if you're looking for a signal that travels a greater distance, then the 2.4 GHz band would be better. Picking the correct protocol or wireless standard includes more factors than just signal speed and signal range as well. You might have to consider and be aware of possible interference. Other electronics can share and clutter the frequency. For example, all of these items, a cordless phone, a baby monitor, even your microwave, can also be running on the 2.4 GHz band that your network connection is trying to use. You'll have to take all of these factors into consideration when configuring your network. Alright, well now it's your turn to dive deeper and explore more about these concepts.